Welcome everyone. Today, I'll talk about implementing Hive to store data locally. Also, I would like to start off by providing some context to anyone who's new to the channel. Basically, you have landed on part 17 of an ongoing series of videos where I build a Skype clone in Flutter. The purpose of this video is to provide a way for us to store the call logs of any user in a local database. If you're interested in seeing the whole process of implementing chats, video call, authentication, and all that good stuff, make sure to check out the Skype clone playlist on my channel. All right, so let's get started. Hive is a really fast and powerful database. It blends perfectly with Dart and you can directly store objects with the help of type adapters. So just like SQLite stores data in the form of rows and columns in tables, Hive stores the data in boxes. In this video, I'll demonstrate how you can create these boxes and how you can manipulate the data inside of it. Now I'll come inside of the Hive methods file and at the top of the file, I'll create a variable of type string and call it Hive box. Then I'll set it to call logs. Next up is the init method. I'll mark this method as async. Now to work with Hive, you need to initialize the Hive database by calling the init function and provide it with a path where you wish the database to be stored at. To get the path, I'll call get application documents directory and await for it. Since it returns with a directory, therefore I'll set the result to a variable of type directory and name it dir. Finally, just call hive.init and pass the dir.path as an argument. Great. Now let's move on to the add logs method. This method takes a log object as an argument. I'll mark it as a sync. I'll start by writing final box box and set it to await hive.openbox and pass the hive box value. Ideally, we may want to check whether the box is already open by some other method and if it's not, only then would we want to use the open box method. Or else, we would simply want to retrieve the already open box with the help of hive.box method. But the good thing is, we don't have to go through this extra step, as open box already covers this case for us. At the start of the video, I said that Hive allows you to store custom objects, such as this log object, directly with the help of type adapters. Although we won't be storing data using type adapters. I'd rather prefer to store them as a map object. If you're interested in knowing more about type adapters and how you can use them to store custom objects in your Hive database, then you should check out this really cool video by Resocoda covering the same topic. So I'll create a variable, call it logmap, and set it to log.toMap, then pass the log object. This basically converts our log object into a map. Now comes the step which is responsible for adding the data to the database. And to do so, Hive provides us with two methods. You could either use the add method or the put method on the box variable. Hive stores data in the form of key value pairs, which means that you can locate any value with the help of its key. The basic difference between add and put is that put allows you to store the data with a custom key, whereas the add method just adds the data to the database and uses an incrementing number as a key. Sort of like a serial number column in an SQL database where the column is a primary key and auto increments itself for every new record. You can also think of it as adding a new element in an array and retrieving the value using just its index number. So which one should you use? Well, ideally, I would suggest you to use the put method, which takes two parameters. First would be a custom key for your data, whereas the other parameter would be the data itself. This also makes it easier for us to carry out common operations like data updation and data deletion makes them more reliable. Although in our case, I'll be using the add method. So the data will be added and manipulated just like a list. Therefore, I'll simply write box.add and pass logmap. And this returns with an integer value if we await for it, representing the key or the ID of the input. So for the first record, the return result would be zero, then one for the next record and so on. After that, I'll just call the closed method to close the database after data insertion, and finally return ID of input in case we need it anywhere. Now let's define a way to update data at any given index or key. Although we won't be utilizing the update method in our app, that's why I haven't defined it inside of the log interface class that we are implementing. So I'll create a new method, name it update log, and it takes two parameters. The first one is an integer value, and the second one 
is basically the value with which we wish to override the current record. I'll mark this function as a sync and wait for hive.openbox to return with a box. Now I'll convert the log object to a map with the help of log.toMap method. And then I'll simply call box.put. And you can see that we get three methods, put, put at, put all. Just like I explained earlier, put all overrides the whole database with the current value which you pass to it. Put at lets you specify the index at which you wish to update the data, disregarding the key for that value. Whereas the put method lets you specify a key for a specific record and updates the data exactly for that record. If you have used put method while inserting the data and specified a custom key, you would want to follow the same norm and use a put method while updation as well, so that you can specify the key for the record you wish to update. Hive also provides similar methods for reading and deleting the data as well. Although in our case, it doesn't really matter, since we haven't provided a custom key. Therefore, I can either use the put or put at method to update the data for any specific record. Since in our database, key for every record is same as the index for that record. So I'll just write box.putat, pass i, and log map. Then finally, call the close method to close the database. Next up is the getLogs method. I'll mark it as a sync and start by creating a variable of type box and await for the result returned by the hive.openbox method. After that, I'll create a list of type log, name it log list, and set it to an empty list. Then I'll simply return this list. Is it done? Well, of course not. Right over here, I'll employ a for loop, and just like we did in kindergarten, I'll start by writing for int i equals zero, i less than box.length i plus plus. Box.length returns with the total count of all the records present inside the database. Then I'll write var log map and set it to box.get at i. As you can guess, we are simply fetching the value present at a given index. We can also get the value corresponding to a specific key by simply writing box.get and passing the corresponding key for the required value. After this, we'll simply map out a log object from each of these maps and add them to the list. This can simply be done by calling the add method on the list variable and then passing log.fromMap logmap as an argument. Moving on to delete logs method. Now delete logs takes an ID of the log which is to be deleted and I'll mark this function as async. Then I'll await for the appropriate box just like we have been doing in the whole video. Then just call await box.delete at and pass the log ID. You can see that Hive provides three more methods. First one is delete, then delete all, delete add, and delete from disk. In our case, even if I replace the delete add method with just the delete method, everything will work just as we would expect. Since in our case, the key and the position of every single record is the same. Although this might not work effectively in every case. Therefore, I would suggest you to use the delete method as it is secure and will only delete the corresponding record for a given key. Whereas the delete at method does not care about the data, it only cares about the index position. So if for some reason the data you wish to delete moved from index position 4 to 5, then the wrong record would be deleted. And we certainly don't want that. It's very important to close the database once your work is done. And Hive allows us to close the database very easily. We have even used this method twice earlier, but we haven't defined it. Just come over here and simply return hive.close. That's it, you're done. All right, so that's about it for Hive database. But there's a lot more to explore in Hive. For now, I just wanted to display some basic usages and implementation of this database. So I hope you liked this video and learned something new. In the next one, we'll actually implement all these methods in our UI. So don't forget to share this video and yeah, if you're new, then please consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.